Good evening, everyone. Um, it's uh, Tuesday, October 26 at 7.04 p.m. And this is our Natural Resource and Environmental Commission meeting for the city of South Pasadena. Um, first, I will read our public advisory. The city council chambers will be open to the public. Um, the next thing I will read is our statement of civility. As your appointed governing board, we will treat each other, members of the public and city employees with patience, civility and courtesy as a model of the same behavior we wish to reflect in South Pasadena for the conduct of all city business and community participation. The decisions made tonight will be for the benefit of the South Pasadena community and not for personal gain. And I'll read our notice on public participation and accessibility pursuant to section three of executive order N-08-21 issued by Governor Newsom. The regular meeting of the Natural Resource and Environmental Commission on October 26, 2021, that's this evening, will be conducted remotely and held by video conference. The city has resumed in-person public meetings the in-person virtual hybrid meetings will maintain transparency and public access while protecting the health and safety of the public. Members of the public have the option to participate in person or via Zoom using the following link. And that's listed in the agenda packet. And there are three ways you can access this meeting through Zoom listed in the agenda as well. And now we'll read our um, public comment clause. The Natural Resource and Environmental Commission welcomes public input. Public comments will be taken live in one of two formats, in person or via Zoom. Members of the public may also submit their comments in writing for Natural Resource and Environmental Commission consideration by emailing comments to nrecpublickcomment at southpasadenaca.gov. Public comments must be received by 12 p.m. on the day of the meeting, which is October 26th today, to ensure adequate time to compile and post. Written public comments will not be read aloud during the meeting. And with that, I'd like to call this meeting to order. I think I already did that, but I'm doing it again. Uh, can I get a roll call? Commissioner Rona Bortz. Here. Commissioner Michelle Hammond is absent. Commissioner Casey Law? Here. Commissioner Bill Kelly? Here. Commissioner Michael Siegel? Here. Vice Chair Madeline DeGiorgi? Here. Chair Amy Jones? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Michael Cacciotti? Is absent. And we have staff with us, Ted Gerber and myself, R.P. Kesbury. Okay. Um... And now we will, I'll lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Okay, I've already read our public comment clause. So let's move on to our, oh, do we have any public comments? One public comment. Uh, Mr. Hugh Davis, if you could come up. Hey, Hugh Davis. Oh, oh. yell louder. Good evening. My name is Hugh Davis. I've been a resident of South Pasadena for over almost 60 years. Raised my children here, coach Little League, Boy Scouts, the whole thing. Business owner here. Uh, I've seen some deterioration in the city, mainly regarding our trees and our vegetation. Uh, there are, I understand, we're in a drought area, but we do have the equipment and the apparatus and the training within the city to completely alleviate this problem. 
We have in the city yard sitting idle right now, probably an 8,000 gallon water tanker. And we have a pretty good source of irrigation water in the Arroyo Channel. The, it would take a, a very limited amount of money to put in a small pumping system, fill the tanker, and when conditions arise where distressed trees and vegetation patches need some water to apply it with what we already have in in the city yard. I inspected it the other day and it looked like it was in fairly decent shape. I don't know if it runs, but I'm sure it does. The, uh, the whole golf course, the Royal Seco golf course is irrigated with the Royal Seco water. It's, uh, I believe their intake point is somewhere up near the, the old uh, Pioneer Bridge. But the water that's below that, it's not drinkable quality, but I don't see any reason from an engineering standpoint, and I am a professional engineer, why it can't be used for agricultural purposes. So if you drive into South Pasadena from Pasadena, one of the first signs you see, it's a big oak tree and it says South Pasadena, a tree city. We're letting our trees die. We're letting our vegetation die when we have the means right within our grass if we can get permit for the water, if it takes a permit, because it's just going to run down to the ocean. So that's my presentation. I says, we've got a problem. There's a simple answer mechanically, engineering-wise. It's very simple. Politics, I can't help you with, <laughs> but thanks for your time. And that concludes public comment. I will give it a minute to um, see if we have anyone on Zoom with a public comment. And I don't see any. That concludes public comment. Thank you. Thank you, RP. Um, the next item on the agenda, um, our action item for the mandatory organic waste disposal reduction ordinance recommendation. Um, I believe our new acting um, city, sorry, pu public works director, uh, Mr. Ted Gerber, talking to us. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, there we go. Um, so, so the item before us tonight is we're returning to look at the SB 1383 uh, mandatory organics um, waste reduction ordinance. Uh, if you recall, we brought this ordinance before the commission last month um, as an initial review. Uh, tonight, we're looking for a recommendation as to whether this ordinance should be recommended to council. And we're actually, as I explained last month, we're doing a bit of parallel processing. Our expectation is go to council with this ordinance for the first reading and introduction next week, November 3rd, and then for a second reading and adoption on November 17th, as our goal is to adopt the ordinance uh, by the end of November, November so that we can meet the uh, state mandated requirement to implement the ordinance by January 1st. Um, so when we brought the ordinance last month, there were a few comments uh, from the commission, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak about those now, but both comments have been implemented into the new ordinance. Uh, it did create, um, they're, they're simple revisions, but with the way the municipal code is structured, it did create a, a handful of new sections and paragraphs, so I'll just walk through those. Uh, we don't have a, a presentation for you tonight, like a slideshow, but we thought the best way was just to walk you through those different changes and then we, you can discuss them uh, as a commission. So uh, if there's no questions yet, I'll just get started right with those changes. Terrific. 
Okay. Um, so if you recall last month, uh, when we looked at the first revision of this, there were six sections to the ordinance. Um, four sections basically dealing with code changes, a fifth section to deal with SQL requirements, and then a sixth section for the implementation date. So we removed the CEQA section number five. It wasn't, we found it wasn't necessary to actually have there. This isn't a project, it's just a change in the municipal code. Um, and then we added or modified four more sections. So the new ordinance that you see before you is actually nine sections. So I'll talk about that now. The first section still just comprehensively goes through the, oh, actually, uh, RPD, is that being shared on the screen for them? Are you guys seeing it on your screen? Oh, okay, yeah, let's, if you don't mind, if you can bring that up, that'd be helpful. Um, okay. Sure. Because I am sharing it here. I don't know why it's not coming up there. So why are we doing that? I'll just sort of explain what's going on. So the first section was a comprehensive section of all the definitions. It basically took the existing handful of definitions from chapter 16, garbage and waste municipal code, um, and then added, the slew of definitions that 13, SB 1383 requires. And so uh, there was the two issues that the commission had with the ordinance were number one, um, it's, uh, I, I don't wanna say restriction on self-hauling because the, the, the 1383 ordinance we're implementing didn't necessarily restrict that, but the existing municipal code did. And so the direction from the commission was to evaluate how to, remove that restriction to open up uh, the possibility of perhaps like a community composting program being able to operate within the city. And we did make those changes. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, the second change was more of a minor change to clarify uh, how monitoring would work in the city, uh, specifically remote monitoring. There was a very general definition from the Cal Recycle Model Ordinance that talked about you know, using internet devices to monitor compliance. And it was the commission's desire to narrow that to be more specific to what the city is actually going to do under uh, the Athens uh, operation. So the those two things appear throughout the ordinance, but very clearly they appear in section one as definitions. So um, I'll, I'll read this as we get this on the screen. So on, on page 18 of the agenda packet, our new uh, remote monitoring definition says remote monitoring means the use of Internet of Things, IoT, or wireless electronic devices. And here's the change mounted on the contractors, the cities, or the city's designees' vehicles, or carried by the contractor, city, or the city's designee to visualize the contents of uh, blue containers, green containers, and black gray containers for purposes of identifying the quantity of materials in containers or the presence of prohibited container contaminants. So I know there's a little bit of a wordy definition, but you can see the intent there is we expect one of two models or some combination of models from Athens, which is either we'll have devices mounted on trucks or uh, cameras carried by their staff. And the intention here is to show that no, there is no intention to install devices on, on uh, residents or businesses property to do any sort of monitoring and, and in fact uh, Athens doesn't operate any uh, won't be operating that way so that that addresses the first uh, or the second comment I should say okay so any luck Sorry, unfortunately I don't I, I am sharing it but it's not coming up on the screen so oh I see I'm not sure why that is, so. okay well um, we can forge ahead and I can just be a little bit more um, wordy in my explanation by reading things out to you if you prefer that. I do also okay. have a copy of it here if, any, if you guys would like to share it there. Thank you, RP. Okay. Would anyone like a physical copy? Sorry for the technical difficulties. Apologies. Okay. Okay, so um, now we'll move to page 19. Um, where we see now we have a self hauler definition uh, now in the ordinance. Really, the only change was taking the self hauler definition from the model ordinance and putting it into this ordinance. 
Now, I won't go through every instance of the word self hauler in the ordinance, but you'll see that basically where all sections of the ordinance are considered in that this regulation applies to single family residences, multifamily residences, commercial businesses, haulers. Now, self hauler is also in that list every time that's referenced. So that's just a you know a general update to the whole thing. Um, so that's that's as far as the changes to section one, the definitions. Just to add that back in, we'll get into how that integrates into the actual operation in the next few sections here. Okay. Um, so section two, uh, a new section, um, addresses. Uh, this was actually just a, a logistical clarification in the ordinance. Um, the, there's a current practice of, uh, with Athens' permission to leave green and yard waste out of a green bin if there's a lot of it to be collected in a pile. And so we wanted to make sure that was um, allowed in the ordinance so that there wouldn't necessarily be a, a violation if someone didn't put their green waste or their yard waste into a green barrel, that there's such thing as uncontainerized green or yard waste. And so that's the only change here is to uh, identify that definition and, and incorporate that into, into the, um, how that works. So that's section two. Um, so section three is the meat of what the commission's desire is here. There's a, there was initially um, one paragraph that allowed um, that allowed uh, exceptions to the rule in which uh, the city's exclusive refuse contractor, Athens, is allowed to uh, collect and remove waste. So here we've added a statement that says, the city manager, um, well, so let me start over here. Um, the, the header of this says the collection, removal and disposal of all garbage and waste matter shall be performed exclusively by the city or its contractors. I'm sorry, I'm on the top of page 22 or its contractors under the supervision of the city manager provided however that, so basically creating an exception and we've added this number three, the city manager has authorized a person to perform such collection removal and or disposal of garbage and waste matter for a beneficial public benefit, such as community composting operation or some similar operation. Okay, um, so that, that's the really heart of the, the change here. Uh, Section, the, the other sections basically just modify the code where that would be in conflict. So for example, section four, one line has been added that basically says, or to any person the city manager has otherwise authorized for such removal or transport. So that's specifically dealing with transportation of that type of waste that we want to perhaps allow a community composting operation to be able to transport that waste. Um, and then there's also, a few other changes, uh, or there's one other change in section four, which just addresses that uncontainerized green waste and yard waste under uh, 16.14 at the bottom of page 22. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, section five on page 23. Um, uh, nothing has changed here. This is basically just modifying the language with concern to, with regard to receptacles. At the moment, the municipal code specifies that the generator of the waste will provide the receptacle. This allows um, the scenario in which the city or its designee Athens may provide containers. Now, I'll make one general comment here that the ordinance is designed to be somewhat flexible um, as per how the revised Athens, the amended Athens contract will end up. There's still uh, a discussion about um, a backyard model, a curbside model. We'll have a little bit of um, update for you here in our staff liaison session about that separate matter. 
but the ordinance is developed rather flexibly to address situations in which residents are providing containers um, or the city or its designee are providing containers. Now we do have the understanding that eventually containers would be provided underneath uh, 1383, uh, but it seems to be that there's an extended timeline to do that, which essentially takes into consideration um, the life cycle of containers. Say someone just bought a brand new shiny trash can, it wouldn't necessarily require that you get rid of that and replace it. Um, and so we'll have to understand how that's gonna affect our city um, uh, in, in negotiating with Athens, how that will play out in the, in the new rate. Okay. So um, the other uh, sections on page 23, 16.18 location, 16.19 unauthorized removal or interference with basically just authorizes the city to, or gives the grants the city power to authorize another individual again um, considering a community complex in operation specifically or um, you know in, intentionally uh, so that that's allowed by the municipal code okay um, so that that is basically addresses the commission's comments. Um, we did a comprehensive look at chapter 16 garbage and waste just to make sure we weren't missing anything. And, and section six is an example of that. Section six requires that all garbage should be wrapped in newspaper. And it's just not a, um, that's not something that we believe it needs to happen or, or is required. So we just remove that. And it also, Sort of flies in the place, the face of what we're trying to accomplish by either recycling unsoiled newspaper or putting food soiled newspaper into the green bins to be composted. Um, section seven uh, is as it was mostly, with the exception of adding the word self hauler throughout. It is uh, basically the model ordinance with changes made. Um, to bring this in line with the city's practices. And we went through that fairly comprehensively during our last uh, meeting last month. Um, jump here to um, I will say that uh, one change that you won't see here that just happened uh, this afternoon, as we were again doing our parallel processing with getting ready for city council, is that the enforcement section, uh, 16.59, which is, uh, it starts on the bottom of 34, but it basically starts on 35. That has been modified to remove language that is redundant with the city's general enforcement program. For example, this ordinance no longer details an appeals process. There's a general appeals process in um, chapter one, I think it's chapter one or chapter one A in the municipal code. And so there are, so the, all the specific components of the enforcement program are retained and have not changed. For example, last month we had a discussion about how the violations would work, you know, the different penalty levels for that. Um, that is retained, uh, the, the actual procedure for Athens to, or the city's contractor to tag a bin that has a contamination issue and then follow up um, with the resident or the business that still remains. But the general enforcement language uh, that gives the city the authority to enforce it is already covered um, under the existing municipal code. So those, those redundancies are removed. Um, other than that, that is uh, the ordinance. The, the last um, section eight regarding uh, procurement policy has not changed and the new you know now called section nine the ordinance taking effect on january 1st um, also has not changed so uh, that's our that concludes our staff presentation and we're happy to answer any questions you may have um, and then i think the procedure would be for us uh, for a motion to um, make a recommendation or not great thanks ted does anybody have any comments or questions
Thank you very much. Thanks, Ted. Okay, so is everybody ready to move forward then, if there's no discussion? All right. Can I get a motion to approve? A motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. Um, can I get a roll call? Okay. Um, I have a motion from Vice Chair DeGiorgi and a second from Commissioner Kelly to recommend to City Council to adopt an ordinance to amend Chapter 16 and Chapter 2 of the South Pasadena Municipal Code to implement a mandatory organic waste disposal reduction ordinance as required by SB 1383 and Cal Recycle. Commissioner Rona Bortz? Yes. Commissioner Michelle Hammond is absent. Commissioner Casey Law? Yes. Commissioner Bill Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Michael Siegel? Yes. Vice Chair Madeline DeGiorgi? Yes. Chair Amy Jones? Yes. Thank you, motion passes. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. <laughs> Thanks for all your work on it too and incorporating our comments as well as the community comments. Um, let's move on to approval of the meeting minutes for September 28th. Can I get a motion to approve or is there any comments or thoughts, questions? No, okay, a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second that. Roll call. Motion by Commissioner Siegel, seconded by Commissioner Bortz to approve the minutes of September 28th, 2021. Commissioner Bortz? Yes. Commissioner Hammond is absent. Commissioner Law? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Siegel? Yes. Vice Chair DeGiorgi? Yes. And Chair Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Moving on to communications, um, Mayor Pro Tem Cacciati is absent, so we will move on to our commission, communi commissioner communications. Um, let's start with uh, Commissioner Kelly. Uh, nothing tonight, thank you. Commissioner Bortz. Nothing for me either. Commissioner DeGiorgi. <laughs> yes, uh, I do have a communication. Um, Unfortunately, tonight is going to be my last commission meeting. Um, I will be resigning effective immediately after this meeting. Um, because I am moving uh, out of state, I will be moving to Washington State, <laughs> to be precise, um, in a couple of weeks. And I just wanted to say what a privilege and an honor it has been to serve on this commission with all of you and, and to um, serve the community as well. Um, I will miss South Pasadena. Um, I absolutely love this community and I love our residents and I love my, our commissioners here <laughs> and city staff and everyone. And um, I just wanna say thank you to everyone and uh, please uh, keep up the good work in our EC. <laughs> moving forward and um, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner DeGiorgi. Um, Commissioner Law? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, I did wanna make a comment. I'm sorry to follow up such a such a emotional thing with a very depressing topic, but um, <laughs> I just wanted to briefly follow up on an item I mentioned uh, maybe two meetings ago on heat emergencies. And I just noted that in the last month, there was a, a really detailed uh, LA Times uh, series of articles that documented um, that, you know, sort of the, the, the health um, issues related to heat emergencies in, in detail, and also did an interesting um, analysis of, of death that's associated with heat uh, emergencies. So basically finding the, un, um, the undocumented sort of uh, deaths that are attribute, can be attributed to heat emergencies. And the, the headline result was that there's a factor of seven more heat emergency death uh, than is you know, formally uh, noted on say a death certificate. So it's a really you know, important, um, it's an issue that RP and I discussed once as trying to figure out you know, sort of the cost and motivating 
some actions that the city might take. So I just wanted to bring that up here and um, and continue to advocate for people to consider, you know, some small things that we might take, uh, some small actions we might take within the city to uh, prepare for future heat emergencies. Um, so yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Siegel. Nothing for me. Thank you. Um, well, uh, I first wanted to comment on your comment, um, which was I believe there's an organization called South Pasadena Cares. Is that it? Cares. Is that is that an organization? And they've been advocating for cooling centers during. Are you connected with them already? Okay, I'll send you the information on that. Um, but they were advocating during all our previous heat waves um, to get the um, cooling centers um, operable during certain um, surges in temperature. That's South Pasadena Care First. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, I just wanted my only comment was that um, I wanted to thank Commissioner DeGiorgi for her years of service and. It's been an honor to serve with you, and we wish you all the luck in the world. And congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK. Um, RP, do you have any communications? Or OK. Um, just um, not that many updates for you all, but um, actually, most of them um, pertain to the events that are coming up. So wanted to give you all an update on our leaf blower ordinance. Um, we will be having a kickoff leaf blower event on November 6th at Garfield Park. Um, it's going to be a fun filled day um, at 10 a.m. You're gonna have uh, electric leaf blowers and other lawn equipment there that you could test out. We have um, many vendors that will be there um, have, setting up booths and providing information on their programs. AQMD will be there. Athens will be there. We have some community organizations. The community garden is coming. Um, transition is coming. Yes. Yes. Transition, transition will be there. Transition is Sorry, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, we invite you all to attend this awesome event. Um, and uh, it's really a, a, a celebration of us kicking off this um, awesome band and um, getting everyone to switch to electric. So um, hopefully we can see you all there. And the bike uh, ride. What's that? And the bike ride. And the community bike ride, that's right. I think it's hard to like work three things at the same time. Yes, we also have the community bike ride happening at the same time. So we have our bikers that will be meeting up at Garfield Park and we're going to, they're gonna have a route around the city with Senator Anthony Portentino and our vice mayor, Michael Cacciati. Um, and it's going to be really great. So, See you at Garfield with your bicycles and your helmets and can't wait for you to test out that electric equipment. All right. Uh, also wanted to mention that and um, uh, wanted to mention that we there is a plant sale at the same on the same day. Um, the California Native Plant Society's San Gabriel Mountains chapter is having a native California native plant sale in Monrovia Historical Museum. We also have a partnership with MWD to um, bring our landscape professionals a water efficient landscape dual certification program. So these are online sessions that begin in November and um, it will allow landscape contractors um, to obtain certification uh, in uh, a CLCA certified water manager and a qualified water efficient landscaper. Um, the testing will happen at our very own Garfield Reservoir in December. So um, if you know of any uh, landscapers out there that would like to learn how to incorporate water efficiency in their practices, please uh, have them 
join this free certification workshop. And my last communication, second to last, is we do have one more meeting this year in November. So if anyone is doing any holiday planning, our December meeting will be canceled. It falls during our holiday closure, um, but our uh, meeting in November is still on. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you so much to um, Vice Chair, to Georgie for all of the work that you've done here on the commission. You've been here several years and you've made quite an impact um, I, it's been a pleasure working with you. I think uh, I've had really great memories with this commission, with you, with the our, um, plastics documentary at the library that we did and the, the pollinator week and all of that stuff. So thank you so much for all your hard work. You left your mark and we hope to carry on um, and make you proud. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm not, Ted, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, well, what we, maybe we could do it. We could probably try to do a joint, just short ad hoc committee update, RB, if I can mention a couple of things if you want to add in, whatever you'd like to add in. Okay. Um, so we haven't met, uh, we've had one recent meeting with the Athens ad hoc committee. Um, at Prior to that meeting, we were awaiting uh, Athens and giving us rate options for um, moving possibly from backyard service to curbside service. So where we were at the time was um, we had asked, uh, the committee had asked Athens uh, several questions about how rates would look under the new, um, the new structure of you know, organics diversion. And so there's several things we had to look at. Um, we had to look at the costs for residents and you know, businesses to uh, for, for Athens to um, divert their organic waste um, to the composting facility, uh, per the ad hoc committee's request, take a look at what would the cost be for the city to transition to perhaps curbside service, and then also take a look at the costs, um, extra costs for Athens to assist the city in complying with SB 1383. So that includes the monitoring that we talked about uh, tonight in the ordinance, um, reporting on behalf of the city, uh, collecting data, and also um, completing outreach to the residents and businesses to educate them on how to, you know, to divert their organics correctly. Um, so the initial set of information uh, was that it would cost about eight to nine percent. I think the figure is like eight point seven eight percent increase. For residents on their current rates just to divert organics. Um, for, for businesses, the rates are actually already available in the current rate structure because we already offer organics bins and organics diversion services for commercial businesses. And so it would basically just be their existing refuse rate plus what was the optional organics rate. Um, and that varies based on how big your bin is, whether it's one and a half cubic yards or three cubic yards, and then how often you want your waste picked up at your business, whether it's once a week or twice a week or beyond. Um, and so uh, for the curbside backyard model, uh, in our discussion with this commission, we fully expected that the, the new rate to go to a curbside model would be less, um, given that there would be an automated trucks, they would no longer use uh, backyard service pickup trucks, and there would be a lot of changes to the model, maybe more efficient with diverting into two or three bins. Um, so in Athens initial evaluation, they found that uh, the rate doesn't de decrease, it actually uh, increases, and I can talk about that in a moment. And what they had considered was um, the transition of the vehicles, which I'll get into, the transition of their labor force, and then also the provision of new barrels. So the transition of their vehicles was essentially um, bringing in new automated trucks. Um, and well, let me back up one moment here. In their evaluation, Athens found that although the majority of the city would be able to change the curbside service, some 4,000 plus accounts, 
there's about 700 accounts that would need to stay on the backyard service model in that um, they live in like the hilly areas where there's limited ingress and egress on the street. There might be limited space for cars and things on the tr street. So it would be difficult for their automated trucks to get into um, that area. So what, you, what we found was that Athens essentially would be having to operate two different models in the city. And that's what made the overall costs go up. So they would have a curbside model, for most of the city, and then a backyard service model in a, major, in, in a small part of the city. But that meant they'd have to retain some of the labor force and some of the vehicles that they would do with a backyard service model and then add um, you know, a different type of labor, skilled truck drivers and new automated trucks and also bins to the curbside model. And so they, per the ad hoc committee's request, they had split that into two different options, basically spreading the costs across the city and then also a separate model where curbside um, services pay for their curbside service and backyard services pay for the backyard services. So in both scenarios, the rates went up. Uh, the curbside rate, we didn't go up much more than what it is now. It went up a, a little bit, um, but you know, segregating the backyard service made that very expensive for those backyard service residents. Um, so I'll, I'll return to that discussion in one moment. The final part of that was evaluating um, how much it would cost for Athens to uh, assist the city with its monitoring, reporting, um, and you know, its contamination route monitoring and that kind of thing. Um, and that was only a few percent on top of the rate. It was like a, maybe like, it was like maybe one or two percent for residences and maybe three percent or so for businesses. So that wasn't a, a huge impact to the rate. Now, uh, knowing this, um, the committee asked Athens to basically go back to the drawing board and in hopes that this could be refined because the approach to this point had been um, one of like isolated evaluations. How much does it cost to divert organics? How much does it cost to service backyard service? How much does it cost to service curbside service? How much does it cost to implement enforcement for the city? Um, and these are all sort of one-off evaluations not necessarily taking into consideration Athens' regional service, perhaps you know, spreading the costs over multiple cities that might be doing the same thing, taking a hard look at how their rates would work, taking a, a good look at, um, is there a way to the service, those backyard service areas with, a, with an automated truck? There was a comment during the committee sessions about you know, emergency vehicles are able to access those streets. So, you know, there, there should be adequate space. Do we have to look at parking, that kind of thing. And that's where we currently are. So Athens is basically bringing their operations and their finance team together, sharpening their pencils, as we would say, and incorporating all the factors that have been discussed. And they're currently doing that. And we're awaiting um, that next evaluation that should hopefully give a better sense of of what's to ex be expected. And so that is further reason why the ordinance, which has to um, move forward in parallel with this, and there was some conversation about last in last commission meeting, will we make that timeline? And you know, as the answer is yes, because we're the ordinance is flexible to handle different scenarios. And so uh, as we still try to um, negotiate those terms uh, with Athens. So we'll definitely keep you posted uh, on additional updates, but that, that's where, that's the current status of that negotiation. Um, I'd just like to say one thing that uh, in uh, having discussions with Athens in, uh, I guess it was probably maybe a year ago, um, it, it, you know, the questions were asked whether or not surrounding cities who have curbside, are they paying less than what we pay for backyard service? And the answer was yes. So I, I mean, I would assume that if they have less backyard service, then it would be, you know, less of a cost. I just thought I would, you know, um, throw that out there because that's what they said before. So, yeah, thank you for that comment. Um, that that was an issue raised by the committee. Um, essentially, our understanding of the response to that is that. Um, there's a couple factors that affect why our rate is what it is. First off. Um, there's a history of cost structure that you know, every time we're looking at a rate adjustment, it's basically based on the existing rate. It's either some sort of percentage increase or, or decrease, even when we're talking about 
our regular CPI increases every year that's basically takes into consideration whatever the rate is and whatever the CPI adjustment is. So um, in, in Athens' perspective, their comment was that all of the cities may have started it from a different negotiation point and are moving forward from that. So that's one factor. Another factor is the length of the contract. A lot of Athens costs are based on rate of, um, you know, um, the rate of return, the return on investment. So buying equipment, buying trucks and things like that. Um, the South Pasadena currently has what we would refer to as like a seven year evergreen contract in that, um, you know, if a notice determination was issued, the contract would essentially last for another seven years and then terminate. Uh, we've been told that there's other cities that have longer um, contracts. We haven't been able to verify that or, or not, but that certainly affects the rate structure. The longer contract, the longer the cost can be spread and, and what we've been told is the rates can be lower. Um, there's different, uh, logistics with different cities. Um, there was just, there's just a lot of factors and it. it's not necessarily an explanation of the rate. Uh, certainly your comments are, are, you know, they were, they were echoed by a number of people in, in the, in the discussion, but um, it, it's just a, an ongoing part of that, dis, that discussion with Athens and, and sort of coming to some sort of agreement. Is there uh, when they would uh, come back with revised rates? So we were expecting in the next, really in the next few days, um, they needed a couple of weeks to crunch the numbers and get together with their team. And because of the way their company's organized, they needed to uh, bring that information to their ownership team and get approval to offer that rate to the city. So we, we are hoping to be days away from that. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I did you have anything to add to the? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. I think there's just two other upcoming events that weren't mentioned. We have the um, LA County Smart Gardening webinars that are ongoing, various dates, various subjects. Um, and then we have the Metropolitan Water District turf removal and California Native Landscape webinars, and those are also various dates. And both the links to those can be found in the agenda. Okay, well, that I think goes on record as the shortest meeting I've ever attended. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to adjourn this meeting at seven fifty-two. Ha, ha, ha.